In this video, we're going to explore the essential steps to deploying a cloud server securely. And we're going to learn how to configure it with a firewall and VPN for encrypted communication. Everything is timestamped down below and there will also be a hands-on tutorial later on in the video. But for now, let's look at why we're looking at cloud server security. Well, cloud servers are powerful tools for hosting applications and data remotely. However, ensuring their security is very important to protect against unauthorized access and data breaches. So why is the cloud currently stealing the spotlight and why are we even talking about it? Well, that's because of two words, accessibility and scalability. Cloud storage itself gives you the freedom to access your data from anywhere and you can scale up or down with ease without the hassle of purchasing and installing new hardware. Therefore, more and more organizations are migrating their data and operations to the cloud. So you, as a cybersecurity professional, must stay one step ahead by learning as much as you can as cloud architectures can get highly complex and therefore they will introduce unique security risks. So to conduct the projects today, we'll be using AppCloud and they have a great and easy to use user interface which makes it easy to deploy, manage and scale cloud resources. By using my code iMentor50, they will be giving you a 7 day free trial and with this you'll be able to deploy up to 3 servers. Further details about what you can get will be in the description below but this is more than enough to start on the project that we're going through today. So let's start by looking at the steps to get into this project. To do this we're going to look at it in 4 different steps. We'll start with deploying the server. We'll initially need to go through the server configuration on AppCloud and click deploy to provision the cloud server. Once the server is finally deployed, you will need to note down the server's IP address and SSH credentials. This leans into step number two. We'll be using SSH to remote onto the server. This will make sure that we can establish a secure encrypted connection for remoting onto the server, enhancing the overall security posture of the cloud environment. Once you've completed that step, we'll move on to step number three, which is installing WireGuard. Now, why are we using WireGuard? Well, it's because its design principles align well with the needs of cloud-based applications and services. It's designed to be lightweight, but also highly secure. It operates at kernel level, meaning a faster performance compared to traditional other VPN solutions out there. So if you're not familiar, this will be a great project to get familiar with WireGuard VPN in a cloud service. Step number four will then be installing and configuring a firewall. So we're going to look at implementing specific firewall rules. This is because we now want to make sure we can block any unwanted connections and keep the server secure. This can be done in two ways, both of which we'll show later in the video. Those two ways will be via the terminal or via the AppCloud console. Firstly, with the terminal, we'll be using an Ubuntu server, which we'll get into shortly. So we will be able to install the uncomplicated firewall, which comes with many features for you to play around with after you've installed it. Once we've then completed this, I'll show you the second way to install firewall rules. And that will be via the AppCloud console where we can import a set of pre-made rules, which is very easy to do so. The main aim of this step is to allow SSH and WireGuard connections as the WireGuard connections use the UDP protocol. So now that you understand all the steps, let's go into the walkthrough. Hopefully by now you've signed up and got your 7 day free trial with my code iMentor50. If you have, you will then be directed to your dashboard summary where you'll see an overview of your infrastructure. Obviously for now this is quite blank, but as we start to deploy servers, you can come back to this screen and you'll see that it's been populated with all the summary of your information. So now let's get into deploying our server. And when doing so, the first thing you'll be prompted to do is choose your data center location. Then start to look at the configuration. Again, if you're not sure, the seven euros per month plan is a good starting point for this project. You'll also want to select the Ubuntu operating system. As you can see, there are many others and you can also flip between the old versions. But for this project, again, we'll need the Ubuntu server. Moving on to the login method, you'll want to configure your SSH keys that you'll need to use. So just add them in there. And you can also add in an initialization script if you're interested, but we're not doing so for this project. And then finally, just rename your host name or server name to whatever makes sense to you. 
Then all you need to do is click deploy and the server will roughly take about 45 seconds to a minute to deploy and when it does it will flash green like you've just seen on the screen. Now we can click into the server detail to start to configure it further. There are plenty of tabs along the top for you to have a look through but I'm going to first show you how to remote onto the server and start our project of installing WireGuard VPN. If you're unsure, like I said, the instructions are laid out here and you can copy the code to the clipboard and easily paste it into your terminal. So let's do just that using the private IP address I was just provided on AppCloud. So then once you've remoted onto the server, you'll need to start to follow best practice and that's done by ensuring it is up to date. We can do that by using the following command. All the commands will be linked in the description below if you're not sure what to write. Once that's complete and we know it's up to date, we can look to install WireGuard itself and all of its dependencies. WireGuard and why we're using it, it's because it uses modern cryptography, which ensures robust security while minimizing attack services, which makes it really a good choice for reliable, efficient VPNs. To double check that it's then been installed properly after we've entered in the command, you can just run sudo modprobe WireGuard. And if that doesn't return any output or errors, then it typically indicates that WireGuard kernel module was successfully loaded. With WireGuard now installed, you can look to further configure your server security. And we can easily do that by configuring firewall rules. This will allow you to block any unwanted connections and keep your server secure. You can do this either by installing a software firewall on your cloud server or by using the firewall service at your app cloud control panel. We'll run through both of these options now just so you know what to do. Still staying in your terminal, as we're using the Ubuntu server, we can look to install the uncomplicated firewall and this can be done very simply with the uf command. Then we're going to add the following rules to allow SSH and WireGuard connections as incoming UDP traffic on port 51820 is the default port used by WireGuard VPN for communication. Once this is complete, all we need to do is simply enable the firewall. And if you want to double check and see what the active firewall rules are, just simply add the status command. And this will show on screen exactly what is being allowed or denied. If you're not comfortable going to the terminal route, then the other option is to use AppCloud's firewall, which can be utilized to secure your WireGuard server. So let's jump back to the portal and have a look at our server settings. Once you're here, you need to simply go to the firewall tab and enable it. This should turn green to show it's been successfully enabled. And then all we need to do is go down to the import rules section where you can see the choose drop down and import a pre-made profile from the import rules menu. All you need to do is select from here only SSH allowed rule set and click the import rules button. Once this is complete, you'll see it being populated below. We also then need to make sure we allow WireGuard connection, which uses the UDP protocol and can be configured to any port. So we'll simply add a rule and make sure you do the following options. Protocol UDP, then have a look at what's been populated and make sure we change the target port to a single port and enter port 51820 to allow the following incoming traffic. Make sure the action is set to accept and you can add a comment for WireGuard just so you know what it is when you're reviewing it later on. Once that's done, all you need to do is successfully check that the default rule is set to drop and click save changes so you've not lost anything that you've done. Now, hardening your server is very important, so you should take the time to go through all the settings just like we have been through some already. We can easily dive into a lot of the other settings, but for this video, I'll just show you a quick overview of backups and network sections. You can easily schedule backups and you can look to start automating snapshots. So there's many other projects you can do once you've deployed these virtual servers. Have a look at these options and see what works best for any projects that you're thinking of doing. Also then having a look over in the network tab, you can start to add in any new public network IP addresses or even private networks. But mainly overall, once you've set up and deployed your server and you've hardened it as much as possible, there are many links in the description that I'll put below for you to conduct some projects. 
this video was all about getting familiar with cloud server security so have a look at everything that you can get your hands on and there's plenty of ways to get in touch if you're stuck but most importantly if you've given any of these projects a go leave a comment and definitely leave a like on the video it massively helps it out and it shows me how much of you are enjoying this type of content.